Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Police and health leaders working together to make sure every gun owner can safely lock up their firearm. Good afternoon. I'm Priya Mann. I'm Jason Colthorpe. That effort is to bring gun locks to more places besides police stations and gun stores. Now, just months ago, Michigan's new gun storage law went into effect. Sean Lay joins us live with more from state leaders today. Good afternoon, Sean. Huge announcement here from the state. Good afternoon, Jason and Priya. Right here in Redford, State of Michigan building. Listen, guys, the state of Michigan, along with MSP, they bought 75,000, 75,000 just for starters of gun locks, and they are going to hand them out for free, MSP posts and any health and human services building across the state. Let me take you inside this important announcement because we all know how many times this year alone we've gotten the unfortunate report of a child being struck or being killed by an un secured gun uh, that a parent or gun owner did not secure. Most, uh, so many gun owners secure their guns, and now it's the law that you must secure your gun, and there's no excuse not for it just going to get a free, this is a nice gun lock too, a free gun lock. Here's the director of the state health and human services with the whole point of this. Every child deserves safety. Every child deserves the opportunity to grow up and achieve their dreams. So please, if you have a gun at home, simply drop by any of our offices across the state and no questions asked, pick up a lock at no cost to you. No questions asked. Very interesting statement there saying if someone thinks they can't get a lock or maybe they shouldn't go get a free lock, maybe the gun's not registered, something may be wrong there. But she says the, look, the bottom line is lock up the gun no matter what, especially if there are kids there. We're di diving deeply into this for the rest of the news, guys, because 75000 that's just the start of the locks purchases by the state. They think there will be more to hand out uh, people that need to lock them up. Really important deal. Back to you. All right, Sean. We appreciate it. Newly released jailhouse tapes giving us a glimpse into James Crumley's mindset on his case. Take a listen what he was caught saying on the jailhouse phone. Go ahead, record this call, send it to Karen McDonald. Stop tell, her it. How, tell her how James Crumley's going to take her down. She will not have a law license when I get done with her. And like I said earlier, Karen McDonald will be working at McDonald's because she ain't going to be able to get a job anywhere else. When I get out of here, I am on a rampage, Karen. Yes, Karen McDonald is going down, and you better be scared. I feel like a martyr. At one point, Crumley says he feels like he's joined the military and he's off to fight the good fight. Earlier this week, remember a judge sentenced him and his wife to 10 to 15 years each in prison for involuntary manslaughter in connection to the 2021 shooting at Oxford High. If you want to hear the entirety of those calls, we posted it at clickondetroit.com. With jobs on the line, Ann Arbor educators filled the room at last night's Board of Education meeting. Before the vote was called, union members spoke out about the work that teachers are putting in. Take a listen. They have classroom items thrown at them. They get hit, scratched, kicked, bitten, spit on, called names, and more on a daily basis. In spite of this, they show up every day prepared and ready to inspire and love these same students. Now, despite the support shown for teachers, the board approved teacher layoffs in a closed vote, passing four to three. The school district needs to cut $25 million from its budget to comply with state requirements. Layoffs could be avoided if the district finds another way to make up for the budget shortfall. We are only minutes away now from the first ever 24 hour crisis care center in Wayne County opening its doors. The 707 crisis care center is on Milwaukee Avenue near the lodge in Detroit. It's a new resource that will serve both adults and kids and offer crisis stabilization and peer led programs. Walk ins are welcome here. The grand opening is at one o'clock today. A new road project is underway on the I-96 flex route. Crews are reducing the northbound ramp from 275 to westbound 96 to just one lane. Then tomorrow, westbound 96 drivers will be moved to the eastbound side from 275 to Kent Lake Road. This is all part of the Rebuilding Michigan program, which aims to rebuild the state's highways. Now turning to something a little more exciting, a lot. especially for Red Wings fans. Yeah, the Russian Fives Vladimir Konstantinov, who led the Wings to the 1997 Stanley Cup, 
is getting back on the ice for two charity games later this month. Remember the limo accident that cut his health short and left him uh, with a traumatic brain injury and paralyzed. Uh, it, now just surreal to see that he can get back on the ice. He hasn't played in about 30 years. His big return is even better knowing it's all going to benefit kids in need. The charities that we're working with is the Children's Miracle Network. We also have autism, Down syndromes, and epilepsy. Those are the charities that we're working uh, with to help um, kids across you know, Michigan and across the United States. Yeah. Remember, this isn't the only game. Next year, we're talking to Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, this is something we can all get behind. So mark your calendar for April 27th at Big Boy Arena in Frazier for the sled hockey game and the alumni game. And you can grab tickets by scanning the QR code on your screen and find all the information at clickondetroit.com. We're also streaming this on Local 4 Plus. It was great to see the players' reactions, too, when he got on the ice. Really incredible. In fact, Nick Monasale did a full yeah. story on this that was uh, we had exclusively this morning. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go to clickondetroit.com and check it out. Yeah, it was a great story. Let's turn things over to our Ashley Barrissey with a look at the weather. And we were dealing with some rain and then winds. Yeah, so we're turning things around in the temperature department this weekend. But before we get there, we have widespread rain and really windy conditions to contend with on this Friday afternoon. So you can see that we're not looking at heavy rain, but a steady rain draping all of southeastern Michigan on exact track 4D. And this is churning, really coming from the north down to the southeast because of us being on the back edge of the low pressure system. So what you see up to our northwest, that's going to continue to move into our area over the next several hours. So we are not going to be done with the rain really anytime soon. It'll be closer to sunset when we're pushing all of this out of here. Wind gusts right now. We have to talk about that. Wind gusts are upward of 30 to 35 miles per hour across a good portion of Metro Detroit. And we'll continue to see those wind speeds increase throughout the afternoon. And that is why wind advisory is currently in effect until midnight tonight for all of southeastern Michigan, where we could see those wind gusts peaking anywhere between 45 to maybe even 55 miles per hour. So if today was your trash day, well, when you get home later this afternoon, that trash can might be tumbled down the street. 49 degrees at Metro Airport. Ann Arbor has not been reporting today, but 46 in Lapeer, 50 in Monroe with the camera shaking at Metro, where we have the sustained winds at 22 miles per hour. Wind chill readings significantly cooler because of those winds. So on either side of 40 right now, and as we map out the rest of your afternoon, we only tap out around 50, but probably feeling closer to 40 degrees with the whipping winds. We'll time out when the rain pushes out, what that weekend is looking like in just a few minutes.